If you're watching this, then I assume that you've already seen my short film called The Illegal, which I made completely alone. And I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and show you how I filmed myself and share my thought process of putting together this short film and share some of the mistakes that I made so that you can avoid making those same mistakes. Now real quick, first I gotta give you some context on the story of the short film. And the story of the short film was actually inspired by the true story of this man. He lived under the alias Jack Barsky. A former spy with the then Soviet Union secret security force, the KGB. When I was a, in the United States, I wasn't American, I was Jack. I was extremely well trained to find out whether somebody's following me. You must, you are in severe danger of, uh, and you, you, you need to get out of the country as soon as possible. That's right. Jack Barsky is an actual ex-KGB agent who spied on behalf of the Soviet Union but later became a legitimate citizen of the United States and actually helped the FBI. On his book, he shares his experiences as a KGB spy and the way he describes his spy craft, like how to know if your cover has blown or how to know if someone has searched through your apartment. And that's what most inspired me to make this short film. I wrote down a rough idea of the story based on Jack Barsky and I sent it to my friend Alex and to my surprise, he really liked it and agreed to make a proper script and a shot list for me to make the short film. That's the only thing that I didn't make myself. Everything else I did all by myself. That's the number one thing that you should have prepared before you even touch the camera. And that helped me so much to save time because I prepared the shot list very well and I knew exactly how many shots I needed and which shots I needed to film. In terms of gear, I like to keep it very simple and just use what I have. In the first two shots where I'm adjusting the drawer and putting an object on the envelope, those were directly inspired by the routines of Jack Barsky. Some things that you can do in your apartment where you, when something is moved, that people, when they look through stuff that is not in the same space anymore. The drawers had a bit of an overhang, so when you look at it, you couldn't quite see whether the, the drawer was totally close or not. Uh, so I left it open eight millimeters. You would have to go underneath. So if somebody goes in there and opens it, they will close it. The second scene where the character comes back into the apartment, suspecting that there might be someone else in the apartment, was shot in manual focus. The way I did it was that first I walked in front of the camera and waited for the autofocus to focus on my face. Then I locked the manual focus on my face. And then when I did the actual shot, I walked towards the camera until I was completely in focus, my face. The way I was able to pull it off was using this kind of silly technique, but I knew and I remembered that when I look to the right and I see that the C-stand is right between my eyes, I knew that I walked further enough that my face was completely in focus. There are probably easier ways to do it, and you can, of course, just do it as many times until you get it right. But that might take a lot of time, so it's easier to have some kind of a reference to know how far you have to walk in order to get your face in focus. Okay, the part where I dropped the keys on the floor. I know there's a good chance that you might not quite get it. And that's my fault, let me explain. The idea was that the main character is dropping the keys on the floor to make a sound, to get a reaction from the person he's suspecting to be in the apartment by making the guy realize that he's about to get busted. I know that my acting and the way I executed it didn't quite work as well, as good as it looked on the paper. But hey, now you can learn from my mistakes. 
The gimbal shot was meant to be this sort of like POV shot from the eyes of the main character walking into the apartment further in to see if there actually is someone else in the apartment only to realize that there's no one. And the following scene, the main character is about to take his jacket off until he realizes that someone has indeed moved the object that he placed on top of the envelope and he notices that the drawer is closed completely even though before he left the apartment, he left the drawer eight millimeters open and he realizes that his cover might have blown. To accentuate that the drawer is actually closed, I placed two screwdrivers underneath the drawer to lift it up to make the gap as small as possible so that you can clearly see the difference between the gap and between the drawer that is completely closed. That third scene where the character is using the power drill and taking off the hats from the ceiling to get his stuff and put them in the bag. I wanted that to be a very fast paced scene to accentuate the sense of emergency. The character feels like he's in danger and must leave very quickly. So the shots were, some of the shots were like maximum like one second long, just enough for the human brain to notice what's happening, but at the same time, like convey the feeling of urgency and danger. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about how to film yourself, then I highly recommend watching either one of these videos somewhere here on the screen because I think you're gonna find it helpful as well. All right, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.